go get the shiny box that Milton has before I forget about it. Shiny box. Was it this box? Can you guys? Um, that's Harriet. Oh, I wonder if we can visit Harriet. So they have to shut the door for me to get that. That's why they lit up earlier. So, oh, did you guys go have a quiet moment to yourselves? It's totally fine. Nope, still can't talk to Harriet. Alright, let's go upstairs. Swansea. Please, Jonathan, come in. Oh. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body, biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> You, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. Hmm. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea. But my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead? Unalive? Immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. Yeah, you said that. One might say a gift from heaven. Hmm. I I think uh, I think you you need to chill out a little bit. I'm a dead man. I was murdered. Now I'm a murderer. Tell me how this is a gift. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. This isn't amusing. <laughs> I think, I think Swansea needs to tone this down a little bit. Thank you. But I'd rather you didn't speak so lightly about my condition. There is nothing I find amusing about this situation. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? Why the stole? Of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. Okay. Let's take a look around Swansea's office. This is what I want. Rakesh Chadana. Pembroke Hospital, 4th of August. Dear Dr. Swansea, I will be glad to manage the temporary morgue as soon as it's opened. As I have already told you, I was a doctor during the war and I will be glad to serve my country again. I know it is not the same being a physician for the dead as it is for the living, but I believe it is important to welcome and take good care of our departed too. Rest assured, I will do my best to fully perform this new duty to the best of my ability. Concerning the question of my qualifications, I'm sorry I can't give you anything more valuable than my parole. 
I swear to you that my regiment made me a doctor during the war and that I saved many lives. If my word is not enough, you can contact the military administration to verify my experience and skills. They will confirm that even though I never followed my medical studies, the war taught me what a doctor really needs to know. Always sincerely, Rakesh Jadana, former doctor. Oh. Okay, something interesting about Rakesh. See if there is... Oh, another note. A warning letter. Pembroke Hospital, 25th of October. Dear Dr. Swansea, I must inform you of my deepest reservations concerning the Dr. Thoreau Strickland and Harvey Fittick case. Mr. Fittick has been hospitalized after a severe work injury. He may permanently lose the use of his arm if not treated adequately. Dr. Strickland claims that a surgical procedure may save the man's arm completely. I say it may also sever its functions for good if complications arise. Our young colleague is an audacious and daring surgeon who might prove a great professional in a few years, but for now he lacks the skills to perform such a risky procedure. Need I remind you of the mistakes he made in the past? Since Dr. Strickland refuses to listen to me, I strongly advise you to forbid him to perform such a hazardous experiment. Very respectfully, Dr. Waverly Aykroyd. All right, something to talk to him about. Got another letter? Ooh, rare species of vampires. A scholar in exegate of ancestral writings, I would never insist enough about the importance of taking legends and ancient folklores into account when searching for hints about hidden or lost secrets. A common mistake is to take what we know for an established truth and use it to discard any contradictory material. For example, we must consider the possibility of undiscovered species of vampires and the necessity to rethink what we see as the established truth about the various types of immortals based on what we know and what we gathered through time. For how many centuries did we consider that vampire was the vernacular term for what we had learned to call Ekon? Until the day four explorers of the Brotherhood found proof in Siberia that Volkoids were a lupine type of vampire, we considered these creatures to be linked to the mythological werewolf. Now we know it is not true. What about the rest? What about the Rakasha from my homeland? What about the Chinese Jiangxi or the Puchen of southern Chile? And without even leaving the beautiful Great Britain, what about the stories about bat-shaped women sometimes seen flying through St. James's Church in Luth? What about the creature only identified as a disaster in some obscure testimonies, which tried to destroy London in 1666 by spreading plague all around the city? What about the Nimrod, the mythical creature of the restless vampire hunter, sometimes described by ancient British Ekons as a legendary huntsman, who only feeds on his prey's blood and could go unnoticed against the mortals and immortals. I tell you, my brothers, we never can be too sure of what we could find. If only we could forget for a few minutes what we're supposed to already know. From Unveiling the Night by Usher Talltree, primate of St. Paul. Okay. I think that's everything. Swansea, I want to talk to you. Do you need something, Jonathan? I have questions? I have just a few questions. Then ask away. I'm at your service, Doctor. About the Brotherhood. You mentioned something about a secret society. A Brotherhood, if I recall. Could you elaborate? Certainly. I've been a member of the Brotherhood of St. Paul Stoll for several years. We are pledged to monitor and report vampire activity in England as impartial scientific observers. That explains your wanderings. That explains your nightly wanderings about the docks and the questions you ask. I feel it wasn't mere coincidence that led us to that part of town. There was something as yet unseen that set those chain of events in motion. Don't you fear me? Yet you don't fear me. And still, you know the monster that lurks beneath the civilized surface. The Brotherhood has studied your kind for centuries. We believe you are as supernatural as a lion is to a gazelle. Interesting metaphor. 
about the hospital. Since I'm the one working for you, what should I know about Pembroke Hospital? Well, for many years, we have been the only medical facility in this part of town that people can rely on. We support the community here, as well as provide health care. Where do we stand? Where do we stand today? Well, to be honest, we cope on a day-to-day -day basis. The first wave of the Spanish flu last summer took us by surprise. We lack many of the basic necessities needed. What do you expect of me? What do you expect of me? What we need is hope. You were a soldier. This is a war. This white coat's still a uniform. We fight to help the poor, the sick of the East End, the forgotten. Okay. About my condition? Since you seem quite the expert on vampires, what could you tell me about my condition and how it came about? As men of science, our first step is always to start with what we know. Forget the myths, the hackneyed scrawlings, and the penny dreadfuls. They do not scratch the surface of the truth you now find yourself in. Will the sun destroy me? The sun? The morning following my transformation. Its rays burned me. There was pain, smoke, uh, and my skin blackened. You will find there is very little that can kill a vampire, my friend. You have been offered relative immortality. The sun will most certainly hurt you, leaving you weakened and damaged, but it will not destroy you. Must I kill? Must I take a life to live? You are a vampire. You feed, and blood is the sole sustenance that can sustain your immortal frame. And only a living creature contains the nourishment you require. So, that's not exactly... <laughs> what about William Bishop? The man we pursued and slew in the canning factory. William Bishop, I believe. Was he a vampire? He was a skull, technically speaking. The debate rages as to their classification. Some think them a subspecies of vampire, others something else. Where do skulls come from? Where do... how do skulls come into existence? The name means slave. The etymology may indicate that they are a lesser species of vampire. From what I know, vampires tend to despise them. Hmm. How is a skull different? Just for clarity. What differences are there between myself and a... a skull? A skull is easier to eliminate, Jonathan. Even if they remain formidable foes for the unprepared. Vampires... Now, vampires exist beyond the mortal realm. That's also not a full explanation. We'll see each other again soon, Edgar. So, it comes up, I think, a little more on the no-kill run. But he does not necessarily have to kill someone to survive. He will exist in a weaker state without blood. But he can... He can survive without it. And I, I believe we will have conversations later to the effect of blood being more of an addiction than a necessity. I still need to give... I cannot enter. I need to give her the um, stuff that I found. And I guess that's where this is trying to lead me. I wanted to make a cure for Mortimer for his fatigue. I want to give him that. Well, we might as well go out this way. Whee! Okay. Where the heck do I need... Oh, that's her. Where do I give... Where... Did I do it already? Oh, I guess I only needed to talk to... I found the antiseptic. Where's quests? found the antiseptic. I wanted to give her the antiseptic. Night shift. Cope with the epidemic. Details. Bring the medicine to Dorothy Crane in the patient's room. When did I do that? 
When did that happen? <laughs> I, I don't I don't know I was I was on my way there and I talked to Swansea so I don't even I don't know ooh give me that something else glintered that did I was looking for you but I guess oh they just opened the door Dang it. Okay, we got a thing for Rakesh, and we got a thing for... Which one are you? Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? I think I need to talk to... Oh, rumors of blackmail? No, no, no. No, I know what that Goodbye, is. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. I know what that is. We'll get there. We'll get there. I have a question for you. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Such a pleasure to see you again. Uh, no, that's not it. You were appointed as a medic? Tell me the truth about your appointment as a medic during the war, Rakesh. The regiment administration appointed me by mistake. I had to learn the job on the spot, sir. Very hard, sir. But I rose to the challenge. You should have refused. Do you realize how many soldiers died because of that decision? You should have refused. Yes, sir. I swear I did, sir. But no one listened. When the first wounded arrived, I had to do what I could. It is an unbelievable story, Mr. Chidana. It was a time beyond belief, Dr. Reed. But I'm happy not to deal with the wounded. I prefer caring for the dead now. You can't impersonate a doctor. You can't impersonate a doctor. You can't improvise a medical education. People could die at your hands. You're absolutely right, sir. But as a field surgeon, it was more like being a butcher. Do you believe you have really helped these people? My ratings were within the averages of the regiment. I saved lives, Dr. Reed. Does that not say enough about triage and war surgery? Yeah, I kind of have to give the guy some credit. I believe I'm still missing one hint. Goodbye, Mr. Chidana. Tomorrow, more I mean, I think you can learn on the spot if you <laughs> if you have to. Um. How long is it going to take to fix me properly? A month? A year? You have the right to disapprove of our methods, and you will kindly apologize when you're feeling better. He's upset because he wants to get his frickin' arm fixed. And all you're doing is debating about it. Oh, Ackroyd. Ackroyd. No, you're Strickland. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? No, no you can't, because I'm pretty sure I can't. Your argument with Ackroyd. Tell me, Thoreau, what's the real cause of your dislike for Dr. Ackroyd? He refuses to admit that your blood transfusion technique is the only way to save Mr. Fiddick. I'm convinced we must use it. What Dr. Ackroyd really said is that you lack the skill to perform this operation efficiently. Is there anything you have to say about this? It's a false conceit. Dr. Ackroyd secretly envies your reputation. His jealousy blinds him. I'm not the real target here. So, did he just lie and say that he refused to do it because he didn't want to do the blood transfusion? And it's really because he thinks he doesn't have the skill? Is that what's going on here? Your, your ego is so, so much that you have to... You can't admit what he's upset about? Ackroyd's aversion for modern methods. What do you think of Dr. Ackroyd's aversion to modern medical methods? It's a shame he's so narrow-minded. Dr. Swansea taught me that science is about exploring uncharted territory. I'm convinced that's true. With the influenza and all that's going on, you should put your differences aside, don't you think? Why is it so difficult to work together? I believe that if Dr. Ackroyd had been the one to discover the transfusion process, he would be the first to recommend its use. So you believe it's just a question of jealousy and pride? 
Dr. Ackroyd is as proud as he is blinded by his obsolete concept of medical science. This seems to be an ego thing for him. More so than what we got from Dr. Ackroyd. He's concerned about the patient. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Strickland's problem... Excuse me, the camera got weird. <laughs> it seems to be an ego thing. I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. I have, I have uh, questions for you. Eh. Okay, so I can only ask Strickland about it. Ackroyd also said... Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. There's, there's, there's plot holes, and not necessarily plot holes, just stuff that we don't get all the information about. Because Ackroyd also said that Strickland made mistakes in the past. So, I don't know. <laughs> we can't, we apparently can't uncover more info about that. So there's a lot of stuff that's alluded to, but not fully explained. I thought that it did glinter at me. I will take that. I will take that. Oh, so much stuff for me to take. Excuse me. I know I need to go there. I am fully aware. Hey, Cox isn't here anymore. There's this whiskey bottle. I wonder who had to clean that up. <laughs> uh, you look like you're busy. Let's see, Oop, there's one. This box isn't. No, it's not glinting at me. Anything else before I go talk to this lady? Ooh, did they? Nope, you haven't closed your door yet. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. The flu took my dear wife, Emily. I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again. <laughs> Mr. Rainfield, that's no way to talk. We're in good hands here, and we'll be up again soon enough. <laughs> Now do me a kindness and get some sleep. I'll be back round later. Your words are kind. The blessings of an angel. You're the sweet, sweet lady of mercy. Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You seem surprised. Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speed concerning your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a vamp. The lady who saved me that night, before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Indeed. Allow me to introduce myself formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. I remember you well, in spite of the brevity of our encounter. Glad to see you. I feel played. Swansea fancies vampires. So it seems our Dr. Swansea does indeed have a fascination for creatures of our constitution. Dr. Swansea is a remarkable man. Dedicated, one might say, obstinate? He spent years compiling our bestiary. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. You must have countless questions, but our rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My cover, if you prefer, has been compromised. Um, patients are giving you trouble? Have any of the patients given you trouble? These poor souls have so little left to live for. I do my best to ease their pain. I don't know that I don't believe her. Jonathan probably does. I don't believe you. I gather you have found an arrangement satisfying both ethical and corporal concerns. 
I was brought up not to snigger at my own jokes, Dr. Reed. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's, it's, it's a, just an observation. I've got questions about vampires. Pardon my boldness, your ladyship, but I have questions concerning this condition we share. As a newborn, your hunger for answers is rivaled only by your thirst for blood. But the questions need weight. I'm a scientist. My trade is in the deciphering of mysteries, and I need information to feed my mind. I will gladly answer every question you have, but first, prove yourself capable of resolving my predicament without eating the culprit. All right, well, I guess I'm here to help. Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your agent in this matter. You could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. I must refuse his most recent demands. Is another vampire threatening you? Who would be so foolish as to threaten you? A kindred spirit. Even if it were the case, and I highly doubt it, a vampire would have asked for something more valuable than money. My suspicions lean toward a patient or their family. What do you want me to do? What are your expectations? Please be precise. As the newly appointed surgeon of this hospital, you are in an excellent position to ask innocent questions and deftly learn the identity of my blackmailer. You can't solve this yourself? If we're dealing with an ordinary criminal, surely you've the means to deal with it yourself, if I may. As immortal tradition doth dictate, all fangs and hypnotic eyes ablaze, the blood would run like a river. That's what I hope to avoid. Violence has a tendency to spiral out of control. Hmm, all right. Continue. Please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. I don't know why, like, why wouldn't you falsify those records? Why would you record that massive blood loss was what killed those patients? Like, surely you would try to cover that up? Is it true? Is it true? Now aren't you the blunt one? I... The question bears asking. It, it bears asking. We both are afflicted with a thirst for blood, Lady Ashbury. That is our nature. By vocation, we also have reason to visit the hospital. Logic dictates. In all honesty, I'm not simply a patron to the hospital. My visits serve a dual purpose. Dr. Swansea has been treating my condition with a revolutionary technique of blood transfusion. Hmm. It seems you are a specialist in the domain. I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. Ah. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion, but I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your condition. Okay, so there's no point continuing to talk to her, I don't think. Um. Perhaps I should have considered the offer from that category. <gasps> yes! Gimme, gimme, gimme! No, no, no. Crap. Stop it. Okay. What do I do? There we go. 
gonna hold the button. How can I be sure I'll not find your unconscious body in the house again? I promise you, you'll not find my unconscious body. For God's sake, how can you say such a thing? How can you refuse to listen? I tried to warn you for so long. No, I won't let my only son die. You promised me you'll stay alive. Your son lied to you, like the whole world lies to us. The door is open. The door is open. Uh, I maybe should put a suicide warning on these videos. Oh, 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 oh. I did actually want to ask people questions. That's what the, uh, the blackmail prompt is about. Good evening, Dr. Tibbetts. Dr. Reed, any good news to share? Not really. I wanted to ask about some shady stuff. Have you heard of any underhand dealings going on in this hospital? I have no time for such triviality, my dear colleague. We're here to save lives. Okay. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. Harriet Jones is the one we want to ask, but the fact that you can ask everybody else is kind of interesting. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Shady business? Have you heard rumors of anything underhand going on here at the hospital? No, Doctor. Never. Okay, so nobody Goodbye, seems nurse. to know. Call me if you need assistance. We probably shouldn't ask about Pippa. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. I also have the same question. Have you heard of any underhand dealings within the hospital? I don't have time for such nonsense, Doctor. I've work to do. Hmm. You seem nervous? Are you certain? You seem... Nervous. If you have something in mind, just speak up, Doctor. Otherwise, stop breathing down my neck. <laughs> I wonder if she's, you know, her and uh, Milton's shady business. Blackmail is a serious matter, Nurse Hawkins. Everything is serious around here, Doctor Reed. Starting with patients who need me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, while we're at it, let's talk about your shady business. Milton cheats patients out of their money at this hospital, Pippa. Are you his accomplice? Yes, I am. Is this your definition of being useful? By abusing the sick and poor? No. It is my definition of getting out of this useless life once and for all. Why do it? Why do you do it? Why not? Most of the sick who paid for a bed are already dead, or will be soon. Don't you see the futility of all this? In your position, I would suggest a more elaborate defense. Cynicism will not save you. This isn't cynicism, it's realism. You still need me, Dr. Reed, and you know it. Whose idea was it? Whose idea was it? What difference does it make? We did it together, and I'm guilty as charged. Answer my question. It was my idea first, even though Milton would say it was his to protect me. Well, he, he did say it was his, so they're both lying for each other. She... I'm, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on you. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. Milton. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives. I have questions. Have you heard of any underhand dealings going on in this hospital? There are a lot of secrets around here. I'm not surprised someone tried to make money from them. What kind of secrets? I'm not in the gossip business, Doctor Reed. If you want to know more, you better talk to Harriet Jones. She's the oldest patient here. Mm-hmm. I don't think... <sighs> Admit it. Nurse Hawkins is more than your lover. She's also your partner in crime. Of course she is. 
How else could I tell which bed is free? I need to know that. Have you no shame? Don't you see the city is crumbling down? Today, people are ready to pay to get a hospital bed. Tomorrow, we may be fighting for food. All right. How are you doing? Goodbye, Milton. Oh, all right. Well, that was interesting. Let's see. Milton, Brannon, Pippa. Let's see who else. See if anybody else has anything interesting to say. 